My name is Jenny, and I'm a wife and mom raising two kids. But I used to live a more glamorous life as a TV reporter. I was on the nightly news interviewing pop stars and politicians. So when I said goodbye to TV and hello to motherhood, I suddenly discovered what we moms are up against. We live in a world that tells us to be rich and famous, thin and successful. You know, almost nobody says, oh, hey, you're a mom? That is fabulous. But you are fabulous. And I'm here to tell you why. It's the Channel Mom Show, celebrating you with Jenny Dean Schmidt. Brought to you by Therapon Skin Health, helping moms have healthy, youthful-looking skin for 20 years. I know that some women dread its release every year, and we're talking about the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, but could there possibly be something good in this year's issue that women can celebrate? Well, writer Kelly Goff is making that argument in an article entitled, get this title, Why Every Woman Should Celebrate the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issue. Yes, I'm serious. That was the title of her article. We want to welcome Kelly Goff today. She's the author of the article that some might call controversial. Kelly is also the author of a book called The GQ Candidate, and she's also a commentator and contributing editor to TheLoop21.com. Welcome, Kelly, to the show. Thanks for having me. I have read your article, but maybe people who are listening today have not. So as Julie and Shelly are here with me and, and the audience is listening, make your case. Why do you think that women should celebrate the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issue? Well, because it has healthier-looking female body types than just about any other female magazine that appears next door to it on the newsstands. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's kind of the irony, is that the knee-jerk reaction, if you're a feminist like I consider myself to be, is, oh, gosh, another men's magazine trying to put half-naked ladies in it. You know, great. You know, something else for me to just really be thrilled about. But the reality is the women that appear in Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition uh, tend to actually weigh more, be curvier, and be healthier than the women that you're going to see in any fashion magazine on the newsstands. And how do we know that? because, uh, as I quote Cindy Crawford, you know, one of the most famous, greatest supermodels of all time, in my article, Cindy Crawford has said that by today's modeling standards, she, Linda Evangelista, Naomi Campbell, all the big supermodels, and I say big as in fame, just to be clear, from the 1990s would be considered far too heavy. Just think about that for a second. They would be considered far too heavy uh, to have made it as models today, and their scary heavy size, a size six. I know, I know. They were the peak of their modeling days. I I read that. Yeah. I read that. I mean, I I, I was saying before, you know, I I wear, I'm in that size range too. And and, and typically, you know, people say, oh, you know, you don't struggle with weight at all. But apparently those people and myself included would be considered chubby. Exactly. Me too. Me too. Yeah, no, the, the, the average modeling size today is size two or smaller. Okay. And yet the heights have not shrunk. So think about that for a second. It'd be one thing if they said, well, we want more petite models. We want everyone to be 5'5 and a size 2, right? That's still really thin, but that's different than saying, no, 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 we want all models to stay a 5'9, 5'10. We just want them to go from a size 6 to a size 2 or 0, and that's the size they are today. So basically the the point I'm making with my article is if you give me a choice of what I'd rather my niece be, because I don't have any daughters, but what I'd rather have my niece grow up seeing, I'd much rather have her grow up seeing Serena Williams, Gabrielle Reese, and even Kate Upton, the model who's on the cover of Sports Illustrated, who people thought was too heavy to get signed as a model, because she's like a size four, you know, gas. <laughs> so, uh, so, that's, so that's the point I'm really making with these articles, that I really hope we start having a conversation about what we consider healthy body images and what images we should be celebrating. And I'd much rather celebrate those body images than someone who's a size zero, you know, poor girl who looks like she's starving. So that's right. just my take on it. Right. And Kelly, you, you give this great example, which I love, about tell me about, or tell the audience about the 16-year-old girl. Tell me about that, that little... Yeah, it, well, because I said, you know, what's really become the, the celebrated physique in the high fashion world today is, a, is essentially a, a, thir- a 16-year-old girl's face on top of a 13-year-old boy's body. And, you know, people chuckled, and that was sort of the line that, that got quoted a lot from this piece. But in all seriousness, I just want to say something that, that I actually wasn't being that much tongue-in-cheek. No. You know, I think one of the problems that's happening in terms of the body image and the, the high fashion side here is that for years, the girls have been starting younger and younger, right? So right. you have someone like Chanel Iman, who's gorgeous. She's like the next wave of black supermodel. But Chanel started walking down that runway when she was about 12 or 13. So you and I both know that our bodies at 12 or 13 is a heck of a lot different than our body at 24. Right. So I do believe that part of the problem is they've started these girls younger. They have a 13-year-old kid's body, which is 
straight as a pole, right? Because that's what a 13-year-old, 12-year-old is supposed to look like. Yeah. And then they go through puberty. And you know what? Stuff's not a size zero anymore. And they hit 24, and someone's still trying to convince them that they need to be a size zero. And look and like a boy, really. Healthy. And you're right. You're, you're telling, they, they suggest that you should look like a boy. And by the way, if you pulled men, I think most men would say, and, and, and thus the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, that they don't want their girls to look like boys, you know? Well, um, one of my favorite quotes about this response I got to this piece is from one of my friends who's a TV personality, and he said, let me put it this way, Kelly. He says, I don't know, a single um, heterosexual man who's run out and never said, oh, I just got my hands on Vogue. He goes, but every heterosexual man I know has said, I just got my Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition. He said, that tells you all you need to know about what it is that men find attractive. So, I, and I think that's a very valid point, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But, and I want to get into the other side of the argument. Um, because it is there, and, and I, I want us to, t- to have a civil conversation about it. But the, I, I, first of all, I want to applaud you because you do feature the fact that Kate Upton eats whatever she wants to, and, and she's a real woman, and she looks great. Um, you also mentioned the fact that, that this could maybe help young girls see that there are other images out there that are healthier that they could emulate. Um, and then right. I looked up the statistic. Approximately 7 million American girls and adult women, and as many as 10% of college girls in the U.S., do suffer from some type of serious or clinical eating disorder. And I think you're saying, well, maybe this could help address that, that they would look at that. I don't know if it would or not, but, it, but at least it's a nice thought. Um, right. My concern for people listening today, and I'm a mama, and, I, and I, I, you know, I don't even let my daughter wear a bikini, so I'm very cautious about her putting her body on display. Um, right. and, and, of course, there's that argument out there, and, and I want the other women to chime in on this as well. There's a book called The Centerfold Syndrome by a guy named Gary R. Brooks. And he talks about the dangers of featuring women's bodies in a way that could be construed as soft porn, you know, something that you're supposed to be voyeuristic with. And, mm-hmm. and it creates this situation in society where men are voyeurs or they objectify women. Um, right. And then they, they, they see women as something to look at rather than to interact with. And it creates intimacy issues and all kinds of other stuff. Does, does this worry you at all when, when SI is celebrated? Well, I will say this. I think it'd be, wouldn't it be nice if the cover of, of, because I know that there are certainly um, women I know of who had a problem, including Cheryl Teague, you know, who's one of their legendary uh, Sports Illustrated cover girls. I think that there are women who had a problem with how teeny, teensy weensy her bikini was. So yeah. that, that is certainly a legitimate, I think, argument and conversation to have. And I will say that I think it would be nice if we lived in a world where um, we were more likely to see some of the images I talked about as my favorites. You know, one of them is Nikki McRae, the WNBA player. Right. It would be nice if we got to the point where we could put her on the cover because – her bathing suit, it looks like a bathing suit that women wear, not when they're trying to impress men or when men are trying to get a look, but when a woman really just really wants to enjoy the water. You know, yeah. she's covered and she's... So I think it'd be nice if we got to a place where that was more um, of the focus and, and the, there were more images like that uh, prominently displayed. I think that that's, there's no question that that's healthier and that should be the direction we're heading. The one thing I would say, though, is I actually am less concerned about Sports Illustrated's influence on that and what we see on reality shows, what we see walking down the street, I actually think that that has um, a, a greater influence because part of me wonders how much young kids are exposed to something like Sports Illustrated because um, it's, you know, I, I hate to, to be a negative here as someone who's a writer, but it's increasingly becoming that relic of, you know, the print, the print media, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I worry a lot more about what they see on these, like, reality shows where, you know, I, I don't watch The Bachelorette, but I've certainly seen stills from some of these shows, whether it's Jersey Shore or whatever, and someone's in a hot tub and thinks that that's appropriate behavior to be topless right. with someone they just met, even if, you know, they're teenagers and, and that sort of thing. I think that all of that um, plays a hand um, in certainly the concerns that you're talking about, which I think are definitely valid. Oh, they sure are. I mean, you know, the, the soft porn thing, and then which leads can lead to hardcore porn, and, and some of our most famous killers, i.e. Jeffrey Dahmer and Ted Pundy, were associated with, with viewing that kind of stuff. And so we, we just have to be cautious. That's all I'm saying. Shelly or, or Julie, do you, do you have a question for, for Kelly? I do. And I'm just curious of your thoughts, because I know as a woman and having battled with, you know, my body image at a young age, oftentimes I really feel like it's not that women or girls are really trying to get to a certain weight or a certain look to impress men. It's to be one up or compare ourselves with other women. Mm. And, Cause I mean, I'll go running in the park mm-hmm. and the women are checking me out and the guys are checking me out and I'm checking out the women and the guy I'm with is checking out the women. No one's checking out the guys. It's the women looking at the women and you comparing. Know, I, I, I think that's a really interesting point. And I have to say yeah. that some of the private reaction I've gotten to this piece is that, you know, 
I've had people who were prominent who said this to me. I really thought your piece was interesting. But at the end of the day, it's not really, quote, straight men who have a hand in what you see in fashion magazines. No, no. It's not. And that is a very kind of disturbing but interesting thing to talk about, right? Like, who is ultimately responsible for making women feel bad about their bodies? And that is totally to what you just said, which is I kind of stopped and paused when a couple of people said that to me and thought, well, no, that's interesting because you're kind of right. That the people picking the models, you know, for all the high fashion magazines are not normally, you know, heterosexual men. Mm-hmm. That's no. not who's really doing it. No. So I do think that you're on to something, that there is a lot of culpability among women. I actually wrote a piece several months ago that, uh, generated quite a divisive reaction, even more so than this one, I would say. And I can't remember the title, but it was something about um, the point of the piece was it was about um, uh, the whole concept of bikini bodies and how stupid I really think that is, <laughs> that, that we use that language in our culture. Yeah, right? thank you. Thank and, you for that. And I, and I wrote this column a couple months ago because I kid you not, the New York Times did an article on the term bikini body mm-hmm. <laughs> and how it had become an accepted part of mainstream uh, 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 ma- mainstream coverage, like reporting coverage, where it's uh, considered a, a you know like everyone knows what it means, right? There's not a person on this show who doesn't know if you heard bikini body, yeah. what you're talking about. So I wrote this column about how stupid and unacceptable I think that is, right? That you know they do every summertime without like clockwork, right? Yes. They have, and not just tablets, but they have, oh, which celebrity has the best bikini body, you know? Which and and they do it to men and women. And basically, the point that I was making is that if we're paying to see Meryl Streep act, then is it really appropriate for us to wait out for her at the beach when she's there with her four girls yeah. and then comment on the fact that she's not a size two, which anyone who watches her in movies knows anyway and doesn't care, yeah. right? And so the point that I ended up making in this article is that if you look at the, the places where bikini body is most commonly used, it's on magazine covers that women buy, Right? right? So it is women who do perpetuate exactly what you're saying. It's not men who are saying, oh, let me see what, you know, Meryl Streep or um, Oprah Winfrey looks like in a bikini. It's women who are buying these magazines that are tearing us down. So I think you're totally on to something yeah. there. Um, my, my last concern, and I may sound like a fuddy-duddy uh, or a church <laughs> lady, but, but I do worry that, that there's this, this sort of um, endorsement of this magazine that every guy wants to get it and every guy looks at it and I can't wait till I get my ass ice windsuit issue. And I'm thinking, do we really want to say to all married men, oh, yeah, you know, go pick that thing up so you can have a happy day when they've got beautiful wives at home, you know? And that, that, that makes me just a little bit sad. you got about a minute to comment on that. Well, the re- thing I say really quickly is that they pointed out in my column, some of my favorite images actually from SI, the sports issue, the, the swimsuit issue over the years, have actually been coupled. Yes. You know, and I, I really, I just think it's so great. I think that, you know, they have real wives who look like real women um, there with their athlete husbands showing off their physique. So I do think there's a lot of positive. It gets some short shrift for um, sort of on, on the face of it, but I think there's a lot of positive out of this. Um, and so, yeah, I don't think that that's necessarily, it, it's all as, as bad as people may, may have cracked it up to be over the years. Sure. And my Twitter handle is, is my first and last name. It's at K-E-L-I. G O F F. That's my Twitter handle, and my website is www.keligoff.com. So that's how people find me.